G'day, how are you? I'm Daniel from Ultimate Hunting Australia. Here in Australia, we're so fortunate to have so many deer species that we can hunt year round. The deer that's closest to my heart is the Samba deer here. It's based right on my doorstep here in the northeast of Victoria. I use a variety of methods to hunt Samba deer, but primarily I use and get the most enjoyment out of my pointers and training them how to hunt Samba deer. Now, a lot of people in Victoria and Australia are trying to get their dogs to hunt Samba deer, but they don't really know what to do or what their dog might truly be capable of. And that's because there's so little information here in Australia. In Europe, they use deer dogs, but that's primarily after the shot to find a deer. And there's a few other people around the world, but I don't find that those methods are overly comparable to how I use my dogs and how I hunt for Samba deer. So I've put together this video for a two and a half day hunt I just did to show you what is possible if you have a dog that's well trained and well drilled and works for you. So enjoy. I do uh, take people on training and dog hunts so please feel free to contact me about that and I also have dogs that I breed for hunters. Enjoy. So just a little bit of downtime here at the start of this hunt. Didn't see this storm coming. <laughs> the beginning of the hunt, that the dog has early indicated a deer's presence up ahead with the wind blowing towards it. And it begins to undertake the process using the principles I've trained it. The principles I use to then focus my training drills around uh, one, being the master, two, hunting as a team, three, building the hunting technique, and four, going out and actually finding deer and putting those first three principles into practice. So here the dog's given me lots of warning that there's a deer up ahead and I can begin my sneak in on this deer. The fact that the dog is a good 20 to 40 metres ahead of me most of the time during this particular hunt ensures that I have the upper hand on the deer. If the dog stays too close, only a metre or two in front, the dog is severely limited in its ability to one, work the breeze, and two, to give you pre-warning where the deer is before it already knows where you are. So as the dog came over the rise, it indicated where the deer was. I was able to see that deer undisturbed, but slightly aware of our presence. And the dog then locked on full point, telling me exactly where to look while still 30 to 40 meters from this particular deer. So here my dog has snuck in using the wind to point this deer that was laying down in its bed. The deer originally was unaware of the dog's presence, but after some minutes it had stood up, looked around and tried to work out what on earth it was that was standing only three metres ahead of it. Eventually the deer, which was alert to the dog's presence, but not mine, only eight, another eight metres behind, decided to move around and try and get the wind in its favour.
as this samba moves around with the wind more in its favour, it eventually gets a wind of the deer, of the dog. Still oblivious to me, it only moves off 30 metres, while my dog remains absolutely still. This is an important part of the training that the dog must not chase. Rightio, so it's day number two here. Uh, had a pretty big morning this morning, went for about an 8k, 8k hike. We saw five. Um, there was two good stags that Ella behind me here got in nice and close on and just at the last minute the wind shifted around and we were about 20 metres away from getting a shot but you know, that's how it goes. You've, got to predict the wind as best you can but it doesn't mean it'll work for you. Now, I'm not big on sit and waiting normally, I get a bit impatient um, but the dog was pretty knackered and to be honest so was I. There's also some um, pretty serious thunderheads uh, coming around. I think I, um, I got a bit of video of yesterday's storm, it was significant and um, yeah, thought we won't go too far from the car today. Just. Yeah, don't need another 10 mil on top of my head after I'm already sore and a big walk out. So anyway, it's not my cup of tea. Generally, sit on waiting. I, uh, you know, prefer to get in their face and on their face. And yeah, just get that adrenaline pumping. That you know, it's nice when you see a deer like this. Oh, I've got a face ahead of me here that's uh, probably. 150 to 250 metres which would be a very long shot for me and I'm just waiting at the end of the day here to see if anything comes down there's a, a big feeding gully just below me um, but I got here at 5 o'clock it gets dark at 8.30 and I'm, I'm bored shitless to be honest <laughs> if they come out there they're not going to see me or hear me or, or know I'm here and um, I don't know if I'll be um, awake by the time they come out. <laughs> See how we go. So as the dog finds more scent of a deer. The training it has undertaken allows it to move forward and work the wind. Wind is not perfect. It does not blow directly to you and the dog can just walk you into a deer. That doesn't happen. The dog must work the wind, take you into a deer indicating where that deer is and ideally be several meters ahead of you so that its quiet footsteps remain undisturbed and your louder ones are further from the deer by the time you see it. The last group of deer that the dog found on this trip consisted of a nice stag, a smaller stag and several hinds. There is absolutely no way I would have found any of these deer if the dog hadn't indicated 300 metres prior and worked the breeze into them. As she worked in on this stag, she actually locked on point to another deer that I didn't see off to my right. Had she not pointed that deer, I would have been given up before I got to see this stag.
you'll now see her on full point at this hind that even with the camera is still hard to see until I get the focus exactly right. I hope you learned something and please contact me if you'd like to work out how you could be doing this yourself.